When thinking about Native people, the term treaty comes up often. And what exactly is a treaty? And how do they function between the American and Native American governments? Article 1, Section 8 of the U.S. Constitution explains that Congress shall have the power to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states and with the Indian tribes. This statement established Native American communities as existing separately from the United States and became the basis of what is now known as tribal sovereignty. Treaties are legally binding agreements between Native peoples and the federal government. Between the years 1778 and 1871, the United States signed some 368 treaties with various indigenous groups in North America. And these agreements gave specific responsibilities to the U.S. government, which the government took on in exchange for large swaths of native land. And we mean really large swaths of land. Shown here is a time lapse created by Sam Hillard from Louisiana State University, which shows the loss of native lands to U.S. invasion and seizures from 1784 to today. Most native communities sign these treaties under coercive circumstances, such as the threat of violence or total annihilation. In total, more than 1.5 billion acres of land was seized this way by U.S. forces. Often, Native people lost access to their traditional homelands and were moved to lands that were far removed and had few natural resources. In California, the Modoc War and removal of the Modoc people to states like Oklahoma is just one of the many examples of forced removal. Also in California, the 18 unratified treaties highlight the government's desire to move natives to the poorest tracts of land and to keep native people out of treaty negotiations to the extent possible. In general, the federal government has not offered the resources or support to the extent that they agreed to in the treaties with native peoples. In many cases, the government found ways to further remove native peoples from the land promised to them in the treaties. Because of this legacy, many Native people feel a deep distrust of the U.S. government. One major issue with these treaties is that not all Native communities are treated the same. In fact, most tribes were never offered a treaty at all, and instead were left to fend for themselves with zero government support or recognition. Tribes who are protected by treaties often have what is known as federal recognition status. This means that the government recognizes the community's legitimacy and will therefore work with the native government in a nation-to-nation -nation relationship and provide certain services. Tribes with federal recognition status have significantly greater access to land, resources, and economic opportunities. Although all native nations have innate sovereignty and have been operating as sovereign bodies since time immemorial, their ability to exercise that sovereignty is limited by the U.S. government because of the restraints of colonization. So when you see that a tribe has reservations, casinos, and schools, it's their federal recognition status that is allowing them to operate in these capacities. Currently, there are 574 federally recognized tribes. That means that there are 574 tribal nations independently operating at this very moment. But remember, there are actually tens of thousands of tribes across the United States. It's just that many of them are ignored. Now, why are so many tribal communities left unrecognized? There are a couple reasons. First, there are some tribes who never wanted to enter into treaties with the U.S. government and don't believe that the U.S. has the authority to either confirm or deny their existence as a tribal nation. Other tribes may decide that they want to petition the U.S. government for federal recognition but they are often unsuccessful in their efforts. This is largely due to the strict and at times unreasonable requirements levied by the U.S. government on tribes. Due to the consequences of colonization, such as the loss of elders and knowledge keepers, forced relocation, and the suppression of native culture, many tribes struggle to meet the requirements that they need in order to get their federal recognition. The difficulty of achieving federal recognition is intentional and allows the U.S. government to diminish the legal, economic, and political bargaining power of Native nations. By ignoring or erasing Native existence by classifying Native communities as unrecognized, the government lessens its responsibility to the people it displaced through settler colonialism. Across the nation, the government has tried to avoid signing treaties or giving federal recognition to Native peoples. 
California's 18 unratified treaties, for example, left many tribal communities unrecognized and completely landless. The California Rancheria Act of 1958 terminated the existence of many California tribes that had federal recognition, many of which now remain unrecognized by the state and federal governments today. A quick Google search will show you just how many tribes are fighting for their recognition today. Imagine having to fight for basic recognition of your existence.